So a lot of people apparently, judging from your comments, want to know how to beat a taller person in sparring. <laughs> Fairly difficult problem because distance really gives you a lot of benefit because you're just so much longer. You can get there first. But this is going to change a little bit depending on if you're a smaller person or if you're just a shorter person, right? If the person has a weight advantage on you, you're going to have to operate a little different than if they just have a reach advantage. So we're going to look at the reach advantage portion first and then we'll deal with like you're just way smaller than the person in all ways, weight and height and length. Easy ways to get in. Uh, actually, we won't even go over easy ways to get in yet. First, we're just gonna organize where we're going. My overall strategy, if I'm smaller than the person, or sorry, if I'm shorter than the person, but the same weight, usually will mean I'm a little stockier. I have good power on short punches. So that's gonna be my overhand punch, my hook, my uppercuts, my body shots. So I'm gonna be trying to get into a range to utilize those as much as possible and as quick as possible. I'm gonna be using forward pressure. I have my hands up. Don't do this with your hands down. You'll slip into head kicks too often. Hands are gonna be up and I'm gonna be moving him backward. And I'm just doing that with my presence, with fainting and by throwing my weapons. But I need to be committed to that forward movement. I'm moving in. Okay, he's gonna end up moving around. Yeah, just throw whatever. Okay, and then once I'm in, okay, I'm throwing overhands, uppercuts, Hooks, big shots that are round. They're in this type of shape, this type of form. Not really your jabs and your crosses. Sometimes it's very difficult to get that close, right? Even if you're able to make them back up, they're moving, they're smart, so they're moving back and to the side, circling one way, circling the other way, piecing you up from far angles. You're gonna need some outside weapons. What's the closest target? That is the closest target. This is a little further away, this is a little further away than, than that. And the head, because he can move it backwards, can be the furthest target to hit is the head. Okay, so I'll work my way up the chain. The first shots that I'm gonna start throwing are to the calf, or this is like a real nasty type sparring session, to the front of the knee. Because that's all the same line. That's all the same distance. I can throw anything out there. So I'm pressing him down, okay. Bang, stomp that knee, inside calf kick outside calf kick, and then I'm, I'm starting to work up the body. Okay, so I'll get to the low kick. Okay, I'll get to my teeth, into the body here. If this guy is long and he likes to punch more, it's gonna be very valuable for you to develop your kick game. Even as a shorter fighter, which in this case I'm not, we're about the same size, I, might, I think I'm a little longer, I'm usually longer than people that are my height, I'm still gonna be able to have longer legs than his arms, right? If he was six foot four and he was able to throw a, ja throw a jab at me, what jab cross, my, my front kick with my back leg is definitely gonna be further away than his hands. So I can utilize that as I'm trying to push him back and get into my round punches. Bang, 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 bang. Now, a really, really important punch as a smaller or as a, as a shorter person is your overhand. Your overhand, your hook, and your double jab, as for punching, are your main entrances. Okay, you can also use head movement. You can leap in here and there, but the best weapons to use as you advance are gonna be your overhand, your left hook, and your double jab. The double jab being the safest of all three. When I'm approaching a taller person, I don't want a double jab like this with my head right on that center line because I'm right in the middle of both of his favorite targets. His one and his two, so his favorite weapons. Tall guys always are gonna try to throw straight shots at you right down the pipe. That's what you're gonna run into. It's gonna keep them the furthest away. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line and all of that. As I'm throwing my short, shorter armed jab, I'm gonna have to slip my head off the line in order to make sure I'm not eating his counter jab on the other side. Okay, so I don't wanna do this. Boom, boom. Because he could go check jab and I'm gonna eat that one. Okay, so I wanna go boom, boom. This also puts me further away from his cross, his power right hand. Keeps me over here, close to the weaker shoulder. Once I've gotten in with my double jab, bang! Now I can bring in that overhand right, which if we know anything about taller guys, they love that lean back, right? They love to pull shots. They love to do this. And not all of them will have that shoulder tight, right? So there'll be that pocket. 
right? A lot of tall guys will do this and they'll get away with it. And if you can see a big space in between the shoulder and the chin on that side, that overhand right is gonna find a great home. Okay, so we're going boom, boom. Okay, make sure your foot moves with your punch, bang. And now you're in doing damage. Say he's leaving, right? He's leaving, you can always kick on the way out. He's too far for your hands to reach. He's gonna be available for your legs to hit. Going away from this distance, getting into that distance. We can get in with our double jab. We can also get in with our overhand right by itself without a jab to set it up. And I'll do that when they jab. On this side, this is still, this is a closed stance combination. The other, the other shot was a closed stance combination. Don't try them in an open stance combination because they won't work in the same manner. He's throwing the jab. I'm going to slip my head to the inside. As I slip my head to the inside, I'm going to step my left foot towards his back foot. Boom. Like that. Now, obviously my hands aren't going to be here. I'm like this. Boom. Like that. And I'm going to bring this shot over the top as I make that move, okay? So I'm going like this. I'm stepping my foot, I'm moving my head, and I'm looping my overhand, bang, over top, bang. You can even see how my hand comes back just a little bit. It does this. I know most boxing coaches are gonna tell you not to do that, but I don't care. It works fantastic. Bang, like that. His jab is coming in, I'm gonna step, slip, boom, and rip. And now I'm gonna allow that back foot to come up and I've successfully entered the pocket. I can throw lots of different shots off of this. Hook to the head, okay, uppercut, body hook, overhand, okay, and we can continue to advance and pressure him towards the wall. Okay, so he's throwing that jab. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Coming over the top in order to enter. The last entrance you can use with a punch is going to be your left hook. Those of you that watched uh, the, the, the last fight, the Covington versus Edwards fight card, the Menfield dude that was on the top of the card did this very successfully. Uh, top of the prelims, okay. He slipped to the inside. Could be on a jab, could be on a cross, doesn't really matter because they're both gonna come to the same spot. He throws the jab, it's gonna be aimed, just throw right at my chin, that's where he's gonna throw. If he throws the cross, it's gonna come to that same point. Me slipping my head off the line this way is gonna clear me of both of them. Doesn't really matter which one he throws. So he throws either one, okay, and I'm slipping my head to this side. Now I'm loading the weight on my front leg and I'm making sure my outside hand is always up. Don't slip like this. Don't slip like this. Slip like this. Hand that's on the outside is up. Now I'm gonna do a gazelle hook. So my weight is on the front leg and I'm gonna jump off of my front leg, bringing my back foot closer. And then my front foot moves forward as my hook lands. So he throws one or two and I'm coming in, bang, with a big hook, short hook. And now overhand, body hook, uppercut, under, bang, bang. You're into the pocket, start throwing your round shots, doing damage. You have knees and elbows available, you can do that as well. We're not gonna talk too much about the clinch, it's another thing, although there is a specific way you should be clinching if you're short versus being tall. Okay, so entrances for punches. The last one is that gazelle hook. Throws one or two, bang, 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 bang. Use that as your entrance once you're in, do heavy damage. Now, we have to talk a little bit about what happens when you're small, right? When you're undersized and outweighed, okay? Guys bigger than you, longer than you, heavier than you, stronger than you, and more durable than you because his head's huge, your head's tiny. You're gonna have to be mobile. Think about like the Viet Cong army versus the United States. Massive army, crazy technology, huge firepower, much smaller, much, much, uh, much less high powered, right? That's not 
correct use of English. But yeah, so big power imbalance, right? Same thing, guerrilla warfare. You gotta hit and move. You can't pressure the person down if you're smaller, but you still have to get close to land your punches. So what are you gonna do? Number one, make sure you have two stances. If you can't fight in both stances and understand them deeply, that's a problem. We're gonna shoot a video on it. It is coming. Yeah, we actually might do an entire course on how to do that because it's a very complicated, very thorough issue that we need to really, really solve, okay? But you need to understand both stances. If you can understand both stances, then you are able to move your feet however you want. You can move like this, you can move like this, you can move like this, you can pivot off the front foot, you can pivot off the back foot, you can step like this, you can step like this. You have very, you're very free to move. You're free from stance by understanding deeply southpaw and orthodox, especially if you're able to understand uh, square and rear facing. Check our 360 stance video for that. We'll put a link uh, in the video here. So, okay, we need to have both stances. Once we have both stances, we're gonna move like crazy on the outside. And then we're gonna shift, switching our foot position as we go in in order to get two things, the proper distance and the proper angle. I'm actually doing this in this glove. Proper distance and proper angle to throw. And then we're going to leave in a different manner than we entered. If you get go in one way and then leave the same way, as usually they understand where you are, go in this way and then leave that way or that way. Very difficult for you for them to predict where you're gonna be and how to hit you. It's gonna look something like this. The person is stronger, bigger, taller. Just picture him with like steroids and like six inches on him upwards. Now, I'm gonna be moving around a lot. I'm not gonna be grounded heavily making plodding steps. Okay, I'm gonna break a lot of different rules when I'm moving. So he's trying to get me, okay, I'm moving. I'm juking, I'm moving. I have good position with my hands, okay? I'm framing, and then I'm gonna get in and get out, okay? I have to get in, boom, 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 and then leave. Boom, 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 bang. This has to be very unorthodox, very unpredictable. It's gonna be a lot to understand exactly how to do this. Mighty Mouse, great person to study. Dominic Cruz, great person to study. All the smaller guys that are elusive, a lot of them have solved this problem because they deal with it, barring bigger guys a lot, okay? So I'll give you a couple real quick. So I'm walking this way, I plant, I throw my first two, okay? He stepped back a little bit, being a rangy fighter, so I don't hit him. And now I'm gonna step in with this shot. Bang, and there should be some density on that. So I'm switching my feet, boom, as I'm throwing that cross. And now I've actually switched my stance and I'm gonna leave towards my back foot. And circle around, okay? I could do it again, he's coming this way. I'm gonna plant, heads over here. I'm going cross, cross. And now I'm leaving this way with my head over here. So it's that triangle. We want that triangle. We wanna go in one way and leave the other way. Leota Machida, great person to watch for this. You might see George St. Pierre do this. Start study some of his sparring footage that's out there. Also, I think he may have done it in his last fight. We're in a close stance. I'm gonna use my super jab, classic George St. Pierre, in order to cover the distance. My jab's about that long. If I use a super jab, I can cover more distance because this foot is gonna jump in. My leg comes up, boom. I cover that distance and I land. And now I switch my stance. Whoosh, and I leave over here. That's another triangle. I started here. I end up switching my stance over here and exiting this way. So I'm gonna go here, front leg up, kick it back, boom. I enter, closing that distance. You can see my head is on the outside of that weak arm, power arm, weak arm. Head outside in a safe-ish place, safe-ish. Okay, so this hands up always, boom. And now I'm gonna shift my weight back. Pull my head past his cross. I don't wanna hit that shot and then Bang, that'd be bad. So I pull my head whoosh, past his cross. Look, outside hand is up. Cause what happens after his cross if he misses and I'm too far away like this? Bang, dead, don't do that. Okay, I'm like this and I'm gonna leave on this angle. Okay, southpaw, I'm here and I'm gonna go bang. And now I'm going whoosh, 
and I'm going to leave on this angle, okay? There's lots of different ways you can do this, but you need to deeply understand how to fight in an orthodox stance and how to fight in a southpaw stance, okay? We are going to shoot that course, okay? So watch out for that. Peace. I love you.